children, and welcome to Easter Sunday, also known as Resurrection Sunday. Do any of you know exactly what we are celebrating today? Go ahead, Hazel. Easter is when we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. Great answer, Hazel. Does anyone else know what the resurrection means? Kaysen, how about you give it a shot? I believe resurrection is rising from the dead, but not the way a ghost does. You are right, and not like a ghost. Well, on Easter, we celebrate how Jesus died and rose again to save us from our sins. Amen to Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. Spike, you want to say something? I'm so grateful for Jesus. Because of him, we can have life. That's right, Spike. Since Jesus died for our sins, we don't have to. Today, we have some of the older kids, Tessiana, Lucky, Diamond, and Gianna, coming to present you with something they've been working on for the Easter celebration. Kids, you have the floor. Thank you, Miss Riza. Easter just isn't about the resurrection of Jesus, though it is essential part. Many events took place before the actual rise of Christ. And there is Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem for Passover, where he rode into town on a donkey and was greeted with much excitement. Jesus had many conflicts with the religious leaders. He cursed the fig tree, and the disciple Judas betrays Jesus. One of the disciples, Peter, even denied knowing Jesus three times. Jesus even prayed to God to stop what was going to happen to him. Today though, we want to talk to you about the Last Supper. We made this presentation for you all. We hope you enjoy it. And now we begin at the Passover feast. It was the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, and the disciples wanted to know where they would prepare the Passover meal. Jesus said, Go into the city of Jerusalem. You will see a man with a pitcher of water. Follow that man. When he enters his home, tell the owner, the teacher asks where is the room where the Passover meal can be eaten with his disciples. The man will take you upstairs to a room that is already set up. Here is where we will prepare our meal. Peter and John go into Jerusalem and find everything just the way Jesus said they would and prepare the Passover feast. When everything was ready, Jesus and his disciples sat down at the table together. Jesus says, I am keen to start this Passover meal with you all before my suffering begins. I tell you all that I won't eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And Jesus then surprises the disciples by saying, Here at this table with my friends sits the man who will betray me. It's been determined that the Son of Man must die, as the scripture has declared long ago. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays me. All the disciples were sad to hear Jesus say this. None of them believed that they could do that to Jesus, who they loved. They each denied that they could be the one to betray Jesus. And Judas asked, Jesus, will it be me who betrays you? Jesus says, it is you, Judas. He then takes a cup of wine and gives thanks to God for it. He says, Take this and share it among yourselves. I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. Jesus then took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke off a piece of the bread and gave it to the disciples. While doing this, he says, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. They all ate their dinner. And after dinner, Jesus takes another cup of wine and says, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. On the way to Mount Olive, Jesus says, Tonight, all of you will desert me. That's what the scripture says. But after I rise from the dead, I will go ahead and meet you in Galilee. Peter says, if everyone else deserts you, Jesus, 
I will never desert you. Jesus replies, Peter, I tell you this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny knowing me three times. Peter then says, no, Jesus, I will die with you before I would deny knowing you. And all the other disciples vowed they would do the same. And that's the last summer for you. I mean, the last supper. <laughs> do any of you have any questions? Why did Jesus' friend betray him? Well, Judas wanted the money. He gave up Jesus to get 30 pieces of silver. That's a terrible thing to do. Judas did feel bad about what he did to Jesus and tried to give the money back. Despite his regrets for what he had done, he couldn't take it back. With the kiss from Judas, Jesus' faith was set in motion. This is why you should all be careful with the things you do. Having regret can lead to sin, but the good news is Jesus' actions that day allow us to be forgiven if only we ask and accept him as our savior. That's right, Jesus died so we don't have to pay the price for sin. Any other questions, kids? Why would Peter deny knowing Jesus? They were friends. I mean, they just finished having dinner together. Good question. I think Peter was scared of what could happen to him since he saw Jesus get arrested. Yep, Peter didn't think he would deny knowing Jesus. But when the time came, things went differently. Peter was around people who were against Jesus. He should have been around people who believed the same way he did. This is why you should have friends who are good-natured and like you. Any other questions? I don't quite understand what the bread and wine stand for. So, this event of the bread and the wine was the beginning of communion, which is a promise to God that we make through Jesus. The bread represents the body of Jesus. And the wine represents Jesus' blood. Jesus wants us to remember the sacrifice he made for us. So when we take communion, we remember how Jesus' body was broken and how his blood was shed and ultimately how his life was taken so we could have everlasting life in heaven. Well said, Lucky. Thank you all for coming in and teaching us about the Last Supper. Happy Easter, everyone! If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 Thank you.